Hi everybody, welcome to this new series about fashion history, where I talk about the different trends of the different decades of the 20th century. I never took classes about this topic and everything I'm going to share with you I learned through personal research on books and documentaries. Let's start with the beginning of the century, the one that is known as Edwardian era. The world at the turn of the century is modern and exciting. Electricity came into everyday life, and at night cities glow as never before. Telephones and electric gramophones appear in the houses, and cinema was the new frontier of amusement. Carts and horses must share the streets with cars and trams. And to move even faster through the city, there's the subway. But probably the most exciting news was the airplane. Flying was one of the dreams of humanity, and now it was possible. The art responded to all this modernization and industrialization coming back to nature, with the organics and curvilineous forms of the Art Nouveau. The world was a new dynamic and frenetic place. And you will think that women dress up to live in this new era, but it wasn't quite that. Fashion struggled to keep up, and women stayed trapped in clothes that slowed them down while the world was moving faster and faster. The beauty ideal to which all aspired was the Gibson girl, a woman that didn't really exist. She was designed by the American Charles Dana Gibson. The Gibson girl was a modern woman, confident and emancipated. She was tall and elegant, with a long neck, large bust, large hips, but a very narrow waistline. To obtain this desirable hourglass silhouette, women squeezed themselves into corsets, wore over chemises and bloomers. And they also used to pad their bosoms. All women of all ages and all classes use corsets, because without them the dresses wouldn't have worked on the human body. The ideal waistline was 16 inches, but very few women reached it. Still, many pictures were alterated to promote that standard. To achieve that measurement, some women even eat tapeworm eggs. To wear corset, it was said by some, could cause physical problems. And this was one of the reasons why around 1908, the silhouette shifted from hourglass to pigeon breast. This new corset was called safety corset, even if it wasn't more safe at all. Over those corsets, women wore long and adorned dresses. They were full of ribbons, laces and artificial flowers. Less wasn't more. So, more things you had attached to your dress, more fashionable and wealthy you were. Fabrics were mostly pastel colors, especially in rose and lilac shades. The waist was scented to underline the narrow waist. Skirts were long and full, and together with the corset helped women's bodies to look like an Art Nouveau piece of design. The look was completed by accessories, and especially two of them are representative of this era. The first is the cartwheel hat. These hats were very large and very adorned, with fabric, fake flowers and feathers. I read in different books and articles that some birds were extinct because of that. But I couldn't find which birds, so I don't know if it's true. Anyway, thanks to all these adornments, hats could weigh up to 20 kilos. The second accessory is the parasol. Of course, it was used to shade ladies from the sun, but it also had another purpose. It was used to keep the balance. In this era, fashion was very restrictive, and clothes were very heavy, so women needed something to lean to. Of course, women didn't always went around dressed like that. For home, school or work, they dressed much more soberly. They all had white and cream shirt waist, to be worn over long skirts, that often had a matching jacket.
everybody worn this outfit for everyday life, because the shirt waist could be washed separately, and more often. This was a huge comfort, since washing machine didn't exist yet. I just said that women dress like that to work. In this era, an increasingly number of women went to work outside their own houses, especially immigrants, worked in factory, producing this shirt waist. The 8th of March 1911, a fire killed many workers, mostly women. That's why today, the 8th of March, is International Women Day. Other two representative clothes of this era are related to sport. The bloomers were actually invented in 1951 by Amelia Jenks Bloomer. It was a pair of very large trousers, narrow to the ankles or to the knees, that were often worn underneath a mid-calf skirt. At the turn of the century, bloomers started to become acceptable, only if worn during sports, though. The other sport clothes were related to drive. Driving, in fact, was something like a sport for rich people, and women, not to get dusty, used the duster. They were designed with entire lines of clothing just for driving. Other than the dusters, women wore long scarves wrapped around their faces and hats, and to protect their eyes, they used aviator glasses. Those sport-related pieces of clothing seems to be the only ones designed to make women move in the modern world. But this was about to change. Passing the time, and especially with the occurring of the First World War, women started to want more comfortable clothing to better move in the modern world. But I'm going to talk about all of this in another video dedicated to the 10th of the 20th century. So stay tuned! Bye!